Okay, so to ream these down to where the um, brass tubes are. So just put them on my drill press. Make sure you hold these really tight, or if you're not confident, put them in a clamp. Brass tube in there. See, I've just just hit the brass tube in there. And the other end, the same. This is so that they'll fit between the bushes properly on the on the lathe. They just end up the brass tube is much closer to the top. So that's the end I pushed it in from. And the same with the other one. Just hit the brass tube. Same with the other end. Okay, just hit the brass tube again. So that's how I that's how I bring them down. Right, so that's a mandrel, pen mandrel. Been used quite a few times now. Got the got the bushes on here. The, it gives you a guide as to what you can turn the pen down to. Hopefully, it stops you turning it down too far. So we put one blank on, another spacer, bush, and the second blank, and then the the final bush. and tighten up the, just get my little Tommy bar. Tighten up the bush on, so they don't spin on the mandrel anymore. Yeah. Then bring the tail stock up. Now you don't want this too tight, otherwise you'll bend the, you'll bow the pen mandrel. So just enough. Okay, I put the um, rest on now. I could really do with a smaller one, so I could get it a little bit closer. But I do just about manage to cope with this one. One day I'll have to go and buy myself one. Okay. So then take the roughing gauge, gouge, um, I've got this set on 1300 RPM, it's not a top speed, but fast enough. So then just round these over. Very dry oak that I've got. Somebody gave me it, it was an old tabletop. And it's really brittle when you're turning it. Get a lot of dust off of it. Just 
she used to bevel on the chisel. Get a nice fine cut. I think worth some slamming into it and getting a catch at this stage. So they're about my thickness now, the thickness that I like to, to turn them to before I start to shape them. I like to shape them, I just use my scraper. So I start with the, the nib end of the pen and I just gradually take it back going back a little bit further every time from this end In this case, because I'm going to be painting these, so they're going to have a lot of glue on them. I'm going to take them flush with the bush. But the pen kits I've got, they're just slightly wider than the bushes, so when by the time I've got the glue and stuff on there, it'll be the right the right width, because the glue will add a good millimetre all round to it. Okay, so we're uh, We've got our taper there, back to about three quarters of the way, two thirds of the way back. And now just round this end over. See some of the old glue there, still on the bush. Just round this end over. And bring it in so that it's a nice progression. Okay. That's just about flush with the bush there now. Okay, nice and smooth. Then this is going to be the, the top of the pen, the bit that the clip fits to. So what I do with this end, I just round over to about a third of the way in. Same from the other end, round over. To about a third of the way in. And now just progress all the way across. Bring it all together nicely. Try and get that thickness there to about the same thickness as that so that it doesn't look unbalanced. Obviously when you're, when you're coming across a curved surface like that, you need to move your body. If you're just moving your hand, it's very hard to follow that contour. So if you move your whole body at the same time, it's much easier, much easier. Because you can move your body in and out at the same time and follow a curve. Okay, that's nice and smooth. So it's time to sand. What I do, I start, well I don't start, I'm going to start and finish this particular stage with some 180 
this is a stearate type paper it stays sharp for a long time because what we do first we'll just take this out of the way and then I just sand it to 180 get it nice and smooth but not too smooth but still provide some key for the paint that I'm going to be using to paint it See this really is good paper this nice very sharp long time I bought it from um, Machine Mark there you go really good paper 5 meter roll um, they do it up to 400 400 grit 5 meter roll for about 6 pounds which is pretty good. I mean, when you're making these pens, you don't use a lot. Well, even when I make a bowl, I don't really use a lot of this because it lasts. It stays sharp for a long time. I might just use a little bit like that just to make a bowl. Or well, a little bit of every grade, obviously, going up through the grade to make one bowl. Obviously, it depends on what your chisel finish is like. I mean, if it was really rough, you might want to try and use something a bit like 120 or something, just to get some of the marks out. I don't leave a lot of marks. It's not easy on this really dry oak to get a terrific finish because it, it, it's so brittle but I, I, it's not too bad to get there it was pretty good even better now it's been sending to 180 so I just see there's a couple of little marks there still I need fine now so I've been moving on to the painting stage I'll just get my paint ready and then I'll come back to you okay I'm gonna um I'm just gonna paint this one now so to start with I'm going to put a white background on and then I'm going to gradually add a little bit of red to it so that I get like a stripy red and pink effect on the pen. So I've already added a little bit of water to this. It's just standard acrylic paint comes in the tubes. And I'm going to um, just turn the lathe on while I do this so I get a nice even coat all the way along. So plenty of paint we want. I've just added a little bit of water to this paint just to keep it wet for a little bit longer. And you do try not to get too much on the bushes because it makes it a bit difficult when it comes to, well, it makes it harder to see where to cut the blue when you come to finish the pen. Just put plenty on. The idea is that I want this to to mix with the red. So nice gentle touches. Get a good build of paint on there. So that's this one. Got quite a good layer of paint on there now. So I finished with the wide brush. Just get a smaller brush. And 
and I've already had a little bit of water to this red paint. I'm just going to go along and put a few stripes in it here and there. This is mixing with the red paint, with the white paint in the background as I put it on. I mean, it's, it's, it's a good effect, and, 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 and it's a good way to use up any timber you've got that really wouldn't be any good for, oops, to go back with the white on that, caught it. Use up any timber that really wouldn't be any good for pens on its own, but this, this oak's a bit bland. Your hands aren't as steady as they used to be. I think it's freezing cold out here. Just gonna get a little bit smaller brush. Well, I could put the rest back on here to use to rest on, but... I don't really need to. I just keep adding a little bit here, a little bit there, until I get something that I'm happy with. We've got some darker lines and some lighter lines. I don't really want too much of the white left on here. I want it mainly to be a red and pink. Just go back and add a few highlights here and there. Too worried about any ridges of paint that might come up. Obviously, the glue is going to cover that, and and when it's dry, it would have shrunk back a bit anyway. Okay, it's not looking too bad now. Let's come back up this time. A few more highlights. Too much paint on there at the moment. I'm just taking a 
little bit of it off. Kind of red. See the effect there that we got. We got just various bands of different shades of pink and bits of red, little bits of white along there. So I've just got to let that dry now. But um, uh, me being me, I just don't just let things dry. It takes too long. So I've got this heat gun that I use. Does a good job drying it. Have to be careful not to hold it in one place for too long because obviously it's a heat gun meant for stripping paint so it gets hot enough to melt the paint but if you keep it moving turn the pen on the lathe speeds up the drying process quite a lot. So I'll get back to you again now when I've finished drying the paint and we get to the, the glue stage. Okay, as I was saying, before the camera rudely cut out again. The labour is spinning. But I've already put the first two coats on now. So I'm up to the third coat. So I'm going to use 
my pen applicator, which I used for the second coat as well, to put a third coat on. I don't use this pen applicator for the first coat because it tends to rub the paint off. So I, I just use it on the second and third and the final coat now as well. So I just put a bit of that on there. Last for ages this pen. And your super glue. I just drip it on and move the pad to move it around. Just about get enough time with the accelerator to move it backwards and forwards a couple of times. So that's the third coat on there now. Now when that's dry, I'll um, I'll sand it down. I just start with 180 just for a few, just for a little bit, just to get any bumps off. And then I'll go to probably 320 to get any scratches from that out. And then I'll go to 400 for the um, for the finish. And then I'll put another coat of glue on there. But we'll get to that. So I've, I've just put that glue on now. Just give it a couple of minutes to dry properly. Okay, that's probably dry enough now. I'll just get a bit of 180. I've got a bit here that I've used before. I don't know whether I said before on the other video, I can't remember. But I get this sandpaper <coughs> from Machine Mart. They sell it 5 metre rolls and they sell it from 180 up to 400, which is the finest grit on it. I no doubt if you found somewhere else to buy it, you could probably get a even better, a higher grade than 400. But I, I, I work to 400. I find I don't need to go any finer than 400. If I do, I've got some 600 wet and dry paper that I can sometimes use, but I don't use it wet, I use it dry. But this is very good paper, stays sharp for a long time, works well on wood, works well on this glue as well. So I just take that down with the 180 originally just to get any of the lows and highs off the glue that have been left from where the paint was uneven and um, and where the obviously the tissue will leave marks as well so I just used the 180 to get it down turn the leave off every now and then to see if you've got any low and high spots there's low spot there still so a bit of a low spot there low spot there so I just go on with the 180 for a little bit longer. You can tell when you rub through to the paint because your um, the dust obviously will start to be the colour of the paint. So in this case, I probably get a light green dust. But I'm not too bothered if I rub through slightly to the paint at this stage. As long as I don't take all the paint off. I mean obviously there's high spots in the paint. That's why I put three coats of glue on it to fill any irregularities that have been left with the paint. So it's on that time on the pink pen that I've made. There's ridges of paint all the way along the pen because I put a thick coat of white paint on and then obviously when you put the when you put the, the red paint on as well it causes lines in the paint to rise up slightly so you get ridges all the way along the pen. I just check that. Right, it's just a couple of low spots still, not very many now though. A couple up this end in the middle. I'll just carry on with the 180 for a bit more. 
And when I got when I got rid of them nearly all all the way, I squat to my 320 just to get the scratches out from this. So this doesn't really leave massive great scratches. I mean, it's 180 paper, but it's sharp and fine. Obviously, you wouldn't use 80 grit uh, at this stage because the, uh, the the 80 grit would just go straight through the glue to the paint. So 180, I find, is fine. I use 180 to start with on most of my other turned items as well. I tend not to use anything. 120, maybe I might use if I really have to. But apart from that. As long as you get a reasonably good finish with your chisels, you, sh you really shouldn't need to use anything. After all, you put 80 grit scratches into something, you've got to get those scratches out as well. And they can be like, I don't know, half a millimetre deep some of the scratches from that 80 grit, so I don't, I tend not to use it. Unless I really have to, the lowest I'll go is 120. So we'll see what that's like now. Okay, that's practically all of them gone now. So I'll swap over to my 320. I've not gone through to the paint yet at all. Here's a bit that I've used previously. It's still sharp. Notice there was a little low spot up this end, so I just come up this end, gives that a little bit of extra. Right. Get all the scratches out from the 180. And we've just got 320 scratches left in it. The first thing we're turning really is patience. If you haven't got the patience to do the sanding, and why bother turning the item in the first place if you're just going to leave it for the scratches? Okay, I'm still not through to the paint at all yet, so I, still, I know there's a good coat of glue on there still. Okay, that's all the scratches gone from the from the 180. It didn't take long really at all. So I just get a bit of 400 now, and uh, we'll be hunky dory. So I just finished this now with some 400. just to get any of the other fine scratches out from the 320. I'm just starting to get a little bit of green coming through now. But I, know there's, I know there's plenty of paint on there, so... I mean, the, the first coat of glue does tend to react slightly with the paint as well anyway. But... Um, so I know I'm probably just turning the glue still that's picked up the colour from the paint. We're going to put one more coat of glue on here anyway. Okay, and so that's all the little dips and bumps and lumps gone now. No marks on the tissue on there at all. And obviously, it's been sanded to 400, so it's pretty smooth. So, the next thing I do check the camera still going yep the next thing I do I use the pen applicator again for the accelerator
and the pad. Turn it over a bit more. I got a nice. Turn it over a bit more. I got a nice clean piece of pad there. So stick the glue down so it's in the nozzle, and then a nice even coat of glue. Okay, so I'll just let that dry as well for a minute. And I'll go back on there with the 400 and just get rid of any of the marks from the tissue. As I say, this is a bit that um, the camera decided to completely cut out on during making the pink pen. So this is... Right, new battery in the camera. Okay, so... As I was saying, I don't know when the camera turned off, but I've sanded that from the third, after the third coat of glue, I sanded it 180, 320, 400 to get all the little dips and ridges and things out. And I've dusted it off with a bit of kitchen roll and I've put the final coat of super glue on. So it's pretty good, it's pretty smooth at the moment already. But what I do now, I just give it a, a once over with some 400. So we get on through that, 400. Just to get rid of any of the marks from the tissue. It's really sharp this paper, it really does a good job. Stays sharp for ages. Okay, well, we don't what we don't want to do at this stage is to rub through the glue to the paint because I'm gonna tea cut it and obviously acrylic paint doesn't buff up very well with tea cut. So a couple of little marks there. If you find you do rub through the glue to the paint again, I mean you can tell because you'll have pink dust. Put another coat of super glue on. Okay, that's perfect. So what I do then? Get a bit of rag. Just standard tea cut. Shake up. A little tiny, just a little bit on the rag. Let's 
start of these up again. Make sure we keep the rag away from anything that's likely to catch it. And then just tea cut it. Obviously this isn't a 10 second job. It's going to need at least a couple of minutes of tea cut. to do the job. Just give it a buff up. So it's nice and shiny there now. And then I'll just put a little bit of car wax on that as well. A clean bit of kitchen roll. kitchen roll, a little bit of car wax on it, don't need a lot, you're not waxing a car up. Okay. And just buff it up with a clean bit of the tissue. You see that's like a glass like finish on there now. You can see there's glass light finish on there now. That's... Okay, and then the next thing to do, obviously, is to where this is, the super glue's gone over onto the bushes. We need to free it up. So we've got to cut the glue as near as possible to the end of the bush. I mean, obviously, if you if you paint it over the bush, it's a bit of a guest job here, but. You can tell roughly where you need to cut. It doesn't matter if you don't cut right up to the where the blank starts because it's simply enough to rub down on a block of wood with a bit of sandpaper on top of it. It just makes it a lot easier to separate from the bushes if you cut through the glue. Okay. I've seen you a reasonably steady hand for that. Oh, off with the lathe. Take the tailstock out of the way. Loosen it off. See that bush is pulled out the end there now. It's left some glue there. There's still glue before the copper pipe. You see that oh, you see there where I, where it's actually been cut off. This bit of bush has come out from inside the other bit of glue. They tend not to stick to it. That one, so I've pulled that one off the end of the bush as well. There's a little bit of the bush there you can still see that's come out the end. I see the glue overlapping the copper pipe. Uh, the brass pipe rather I should say. But it's no big deal. A bush pulled out the end, and this bush hopefully will pull out the end as well. Huh. Oops. Okay, so we've got that one out as well. 
Put those all back on there for safekeeping. I say now we can just sand these down. I use a bit of 180 on a block of wood. And so just obviously put that bit of 180 on there. And then just gently sand until we get down to the brass tube. And the same the other end, got about a millimetre and a half of glue still. Just gently sand it down. Don't go too high, otherwise you like to crack. Crack the glue. There you go. Okay, that one's down to the brass tube now as well. This one, about a mil, millimetre or so to take up. Doesn't take long really at all. But I find this is the, the best way is to cut the glue on the on the mandrel. Especially when you got as much glue as this. Obviously if it was just a wooden or an acrylic pen with a coat of glue with one coat of glue on it just to give it some shine yeah, it wouldn't really matter a lot because that one coat of glue that would snap really quite easily at the end of the blank but when you've got four coats of glue, there's four coats of glue on this remember the glue itself is, is Oh, probably almost a millimetre thick. So that one's all sandy down to the brass now. Other end, about a millimetre again. Getting pretty good at guessing where the end of the bushes now. I say if you're really very careful and you don't paint onto the bush, which you know it's not terrifically easy not it's not terrifically easy to not paint onto the bush, especially when you've got shaky hands like me. But anyway, so we're we're down to the, the brass tube on that as well now. So as you can see we've got a nice girly pen. Well it's not a pen yet until I push it together but um, it will be a nice girly pen. Nice pinky colour and quite a good effect with the stripes on it.